What's good everyone? It's your boy Nazi with another video for the channel. Welcome back to DMV Sports Zone. It seems like every time I move back to Chicago for school, this team just finds a way to disappoint. Because it's always around this time, late September. Last year, I believe it was the Cardinals game. This year, this Bills game was an abomination. Washington lost 21-43. And I don't even think the final score told of the full story of what happened today. Washington's defense, as Burgundy Blog said on Twitter, and I know there are some fans out there who don't like Burgundy Blog, don't like what he posts, but 90% of the time he is factual. He is right. There, stop all the talk about this being a top five, top 10 defense. This defense is atrocious right now. Absolutely atrocious. Chase Young going off the field, gassed, complaining, or not necessarily complaining, but mad about how the defense was performing and stuff. As if he didn't have the power to really transform this defense today and really make an impact. He made no impact plays. I'm tired of all the talk about how Chase Young gets double team, triple team. He was the number two overall pick. He needs to make these plays. He needs to make these plays. You don't invest the number two overall pick in the NFL draft. And a guy who basically you have above, uh, above average to average offensive linemen who easily beat up on him every single week. Every single week, at least to start the 2021 season. I'm not saying he can't turn it around. I have a lot of, of faith in Chase Young and his abilities. He's not a generational talent. At least he hasn't shown it. But I, I have faith in his abilities and that he could turn this around and really be an impact player for us this year. But he needs to turn, turn it around very quickly because he has been underperforming to start the season. I've been saying since the start of the 2020 season that Montez Sweat has outplayed Chase Young. Again, people love to bring up the fact that, once again, Chase Young gets double teamed, chip blocks, all this stuff. I don't care. Offenses also understand that Montez Sweat is a legit threat at this point, right? And he keeps producing. Tonight, he didn't, today he didn't have any sacks, right? So he didn't put up those numbers or anything. But he had this one nice, he forced this one nice incompletion by Josh Allen that could have been a touchdown, but ultimately put pressure on Josh Allen. And essentially, Josh Allen threw an incompletion on that play in the end zone. Okay, he made one play. Chase Young made zero impact plays today. Zero. Zero. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm only ranting on Chase Young right now because I care. Because I know he is, he could be our best player on this defense. But to me, he hasn't shown it. Elsewhere on the defense, and I think the part of the defense that deserves even more blame, this secondary is atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. You have William Jackson the third. Who's solid? Who's solid? He does have some miscues, but he's solid. He even had that uh, one phantom pass interference in the first half, which, I don't know, the refs were all over today, but I do not blame our loss on the refs whatsoever, okay? But William Jackson third, pretty solid. I don't know about the price tag, but I think he'll get better as the season goes along. Kendall Fuller, I've been saying this for the last couple weeks, really since midway through last year, if we're going to be honest. Outside of those first five-ish, six -ish games from last season, where he had like four interceptions in those games, it was insane. His, his pass coverage was also amazing because oftentimes when you get a defensive back who racks up picks, or not oftentimes, sometimes, the pass coverage isn't necessarily always there, right? You got to compromise one for the other. But no, Kendall Fuller was perfect, pretty much perfect during those games. Since then, he's been trash. He's been trash. It's not like we're paying him five, six million dollars a year. He's getting paid double digits per year, okay? Again, I'm not saying he can't turn it around, but to me, he has been underperforming as well. Cam Curl didn't have the best of games, although I think the last two games were okay from Cam Curl, right? So I think, again, he will turn around. This has become a theme, right, guys, for all those who are listening, that I think this defense can turn around. But this defense will no way be top five, top ten with the way it's been performing thus far. We cannot stop mobile quarterbacks. Guys, you know how many great quarterbacks we have up on our schedule? I'm going to bring his name up again, but Burgundy Bog last year, and I said the same thing. I thought our defense last year, our defensive performance was kind of fluky because we played against some trash offenses, some trash quarterbacks, and I wanted to see us actually perform against some great quarterbacks, which we didn't do last year. Remember the Ravens game? Lamar Jackson, speaking of, Justin Tucker, best field goal kicker of all time, man. This man's 
literally made a 66 yard field goal, I believe, at the end of the game to win the Ravens the game. Broke the record, I believe, for longest field goal ever. That's besides the point, but I wanted to bring up Justin Tucker's name. The Ravens game. Lamar Jackson ran all over us. Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. I mean, the list goes on and on, and it just continues this year. And this year, we're not just making the best of quarterbacks look awesome, like the Josh Allens of the world. Or even the Justin Herberts, who I think will be a top five quarterback sooner rather than later. We're making Daniel Jones also look amazing. Even Mitch Trubisky, who had a garbage time play today. And I'm a, I'm a Chicago student, remember? I'm a Chicago student. I watched Mitchell Trubisky stink it up for the Bears for the last three years. He did have that nice year where he backed into a Pro Bowl. The Bears won a lot of games. And remember that uh, double doink in the playoffs? But overall, Mitchell Trubisky's career in Chicago was abysmal. You can blame the coaching staff all you want. But I think the quarterback had at least somewhat to do with all that, right? We even made Mitchell Trubisky look good at the end of the game. Running all over us. We suck against mobile quarterbacks. We sucked against mobile quarterbacks for, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know how long it's been. The last six, seven years, beyond even Jack Del Rio years. But this is especially inexcusable with Jack Del Rio being the top-notch defensive coordinator that he is. I mean, he showed us his magic turning our defense into an absolute great force last year against, albeit, again, terrible offenses. But they were still pretty solid. They kept us in games. This year has been the opposite. The defense has been atrocious. Guys, I'm not even looking at my notes. I'm so furious right now. I mean, the one highlight in this game, a couple, I would say. Terry McLaurin kept playing until the very end. He was playing hard. I mean, he was getting locked up by Trey Davis White, which I predicted, I believe, in my stream, my live stream from last week. Because Trey Davis White is that kind of player. But Ter Terry McLaurin was still playing, and you got to credit him. He even made that tackle and that interception return. Speaking of, Taylor Heineke was uh, mediocre at best today, probably even worse than that. It was not the best Taylor Heineke performance, although I do, not, I do not think the loss is entirely on him today. I don't. I really don't. He did make those two terrible interceptions, and I've been saying week in and week out that he's due for one terrible turnover per game. He is really like the Kirk Cousins, right? Maybe a little bit... A little bit less good than Kirk Cousins. But in terms of that aspect, he's just like Kirk Cousins. At least his time here in D.C. But outside of Terry, Antonio Gibson had that nice 73-yard reception. Touchdown. He died for the touchdown. Much like Taylor Heineke did earlier in the game. Antonio Gibson, great play. Great, great play. Great play. And I loved what happened afterwards where we had that, I don't know what it was, that miscue on the Buffalo kick return. That ultimately led to Dustin Hopkins recovering his own kick. But Antonio Gibson, outside that 73-yard run, did not do much today. He did find some holes, right? He did find some holes. He wasn't bad. But I blame largely Scott Turner for not running the ball more today and keeping us in the game early on, right? There was a point in the game where we were down 21-0. I thought this was it. This was it. This is the typical what was then the Redskins, now the Washington football team route, right? An opposing team just runs all over us crushes us and we move on to the next game but no Washington showed some life early on put up 14 straight points it was 14 21 you know I thought Washington could keep things interesting for a good period <sighs> then Buffalo Josh Allen and drove down the field ultimately by the end of the half it was 27 14 it was still a two possession game right Washington had the ball to start the second half I mean, I, I was still, I was getting ready to think about classes given that it's Sunday, but there was still that part of me was like, you know what? Let's keep watching. Even though I watch all the games, let's keep watching closely and see what Washington can do. And we just wet the bag and wet the bed in the second half. And uh, the rest, the rest was terrible history for this team. Um, yeah, it, it was not great guys. I, I, I know you guys sort of look to me to give you guys some great analysis and positives, but this was all negatives, guys. It was all negatives besides that big Antonio Gibson run, even that Logan Thomas touchdown in garbage time, which didn't really matter, to be honest. I mean, Mitchell Trubisky played in the next drive, so it tells you all you need to know. Josh Allen, man, five total touchdowns, four passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. I told you, I told everybody on the DMV Sports Zone Twitter, make sure you guys follow that if you don't already. 
a couple years back, I thought that Josh, Josh Allen was going to be a top five, top 10 quarterback and potentially could have had an MVP last season before everybody saw how great he was last season. And I, I'm, I'm a huge believer in him. I was a huge believer in him before this game. I'm even more of a believer in him now, now that he got right against our defense. But Josh Allen is the truth. Even Stephon Dix didn't have the greatest of games, the DMV native, but it didn't matter when we let Emmanuel Sanders, oh my gosh, get deep. Kendall Fuller, what the, you know, what are were you doing, bro? Like, I don't know how many times Emmanuel Sanders got deep in this game. Even when the game was close, it really was what cost us the game, at, at least somewhat, or allow the Buffalo Bills to really just run all over us, right? Allow them to really pass the ball wherever they wanted. Our defense was just plain old butter, man. You could just slice through it. It was so easy to just... Uh, it's frustrating, man. We we have we put our hopes in this team. I wasn't one of those fans who thought we were going to win double-digit games. I thought 8-9, 9-8 at best. But, man, I did not expect this performance. I did expect a loss, but I did not expect... A 20, what, 22 point defeat. Could have been even worse if Josh Allen was stayed in the game. But, and, you know, I didn't even mention this earlier. Didn't even mention this earlier, but this was one of the first tweets I posted during the game. And it was about our linebacker group. And it was, of course, about John Bostick, man. John Bostick needs to be cut. You guys heard me for more than a year now say that John Bostick is a backup at best on a good defense. He needs to be cut. He needs to be cut tomorrow, if not next week, or they need to bring somebody in, give him some legit competition, even this at this point in the season, after the third week, because he played absolutely atrocious today, man. I mean, I think it was Jesse or it was some some film guy on Twitter. I'm, I'm sorry that I'm forgetting your name. On Twitter, basically said that he kept his eye trained on John Bostic for a good part of the first half, and it was pretty much a train wreck. Every single play, bro. Like, for as much defensive expertise that we have in our defensive coaches, right? In our coaches overall, Ron Rivera, Jack Del Rio. You got you got to make a decision about John Bostic. Give him less reps. I didn't like the decision that he was captain going into the season. Everybody talks about how he's so smart and how he makes sure the defense is always where it needs to be. Bro, he hasn't in the first three weeks of the season. And... In addition to that, he's been playing terribly. He's been playing terribly for the last year, to be honest. But especially in these last three games. And we haven't even played the best of offenses, right? We played the Buffalo Bills, who are a good offense, but they didn't really show much leading up to this game. We haven't played, you know, the Packers of the world. Um, who else do we have? Uh, we, the Saints, even when Jameis Winston are putting up some points. Um, I mean, we, we got so many teams coming up, guys. It... I don't know. This defense doesn't get re doesn't get right quickly. The season may be over before it even started. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so sorry for this downer of a video, guys, but I needed to talk to you guys about this performance because I could not let in, could not keep in all my thoughts. It it, it was an absolute abomination. And on to the next one, right? We got the Falcons. Who knows? Curtis Samuel might be back off the IR, but with the way our luck has been. Who knows? <laughs> Over the last couple of years, who knows? But we do have the Atlanta Falcons coming up. Definitely a winnable game. I mean, at this point, give us a 50-50 shot. I don't give us anything more than that because this, this team needs to earn that from me. It needs to earn that from me, especially this defense because going into the season, we thought the defense could be at least solid, right? At least top half of the league. <laughs> it's been nothing like that. I mean, 43 points tonight, today, uh, what 29 points on against the Giants of all teams Daniel Jones running all over us and then 20 points against the Chargers but that didn't even tell the full story because Justin Herbert was just slicing and dicing us all over on all over the field but again thank you guys so much for watching please make sure to like comment subscribe to the DMV Sports so channel we're trying to post I would say fire content but this is uh interesting content as much as possible. Go follow our Twitter page at DMV Sports on Instagram page, all lowercase DMV Sports Zone. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to get us to a thousand subs. We're almost there, guys. And see you next week. We got a full slate of videos coming up. Peace.